So on this circuit, we're going to use the 741 op amp to amplify a signal. So if the signal is positive or negative, the output will have a higher voltage, positive or negative, than the input signal. So we're going to use the 741 op amp. Uh, integrated circuit again. I've been using this in in recent videos, so I'm not going to explain as much. I'm going to do more of a step-by-step -step build. So I have here a diagram of the integrated circuit. And so to begin with, we're going to have a split power supply, uh, positive side of one battery, and then the negative side of the other battery. These batteries will be in series. Where they connect in series will be the ground. And so, pin 7 here, that goes to the positive side. You can see that goes to the positive rail. The two rails are connected though. So, whatever uh, voltage we have here will also be on that side. Same with the negative. And then, pin 4, that goes to the negative side of the power supply. This will be the negative side of the other 9 volt battery. So, from this point to this point, and actually this point to that point, that point, that point, we'll have an 18 volt difference. But uh, that's just for the chip to give us either a positive about 9 volts or about uh, 9 volts negative. It's slightly lower. So now to control the amount of amplification, we need to take the output and connect that to the inverting pin with a negative feedback resistor. That's what this resistor is called, negative feedback. And then that'll also have another resistor connected to ground. And the value of these two resistors will determine the amount of amplification. So the output is pin 6 and the inverting input is pin 2. So that's going to be our negative feedback. This is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. The value of the resistors determine how much amplification there will be. And then the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor I'll connect from pin 2 to the ground. And there we have it. That's the inverting pin. As you can see here, we're all done with that one. So now we're going to hook up our signal generator, which will just be a trim pot. Uh, the trim pot's going to be connected to the two ends of the 9 volt batteries. Remember, they're in series, but the negative side of one battery comes to one side of the trim pot. The positive side of the other battery comes to the other end of the trim pot. So from one end of the trim pot to the other, we have an 18 volt difference. One side positive, one side negative. In the middle is halfway, zero volts. So uh, the wiper will slide somewhere along there. And that's going to connect directly to the non-inverting pin. I just kind of added this diagram to show there's going to be uh, alternating voltage, which won't be a sine wave, but, but will depend on where we have the trim pot set. So that goes directly to the non-inverting pin. So the reason why the signal goes to the non-inverting pin is because we want the input voltage to be the same polarity as the output voltage. Whenever the input is positive, the output will be positive. Whenever the input's negative, the output will be negative, but it will be a multiple. It'll be larger and uh, it'll be amplified. So the non inverting pin is pin 3. So to make this connection, I'm just going to take a jumper and jumper wire, connect one side to the trim pot. Here you can see. It's already wired to the positive negative. And then we're going to go down to pin 3 here and insert the wire there. And one reason why I'm using the jumper and not a resistor is because on the breadboard these wires are close. I don't want them to connect because then they'll just short through each other. It won't damage anything but it will make it so the circuit doesn't work. So now quickly before we move along, I just want to mention this is a 5 kilo ohm trim pot. It doesn't need to be this high, but a lot of times I use a 500 ohm trim pot and uh, that wasn't uh, enough uh, resistance for this circuit because as I said we have 18 volts coming across here. I usually use the 500 ohm trim pot when I had a 9 volt circuit, but here we're dealing with 18 volts 
and uh, that's too much current for a 500 ohm uh, resistor. So I'm not sure the exact value. I'd probably use at least a thousand ohm trim pot, uh, but just be aware of that. With this circuit, even though we're using nine volt batteries, those nine volt batteries are in series as far as the power rail is concerned. So you want to make sure uh, the trim pot, which uh, is the only circuit other than the op amp, which has 18 volts across it, uh, make sure that can handle the the wattage, the amount of power going through it. So now technically our circuit's complete. Uh, as far as the, the amplifier is concerned, we're, we're all done. But uh, we won't see it doing anything. And so I'm going to add this polarity indicator circuit so that we can tell by which LED lights up the polarity of the output as long as the voltage is high enough to start it conducting. So I'm going to take the green LED. Well, first we need the protective resistor. Since we're going to deal with you know close to 9 volts, 470 ohm resistor is fine. So I'll put that to pin 6, the output, and put it one row away from the ground. This will be our ground where the two batteries connect to each other to make them in series. So the green LED, we want the anode towards the output so that the green LED will turn on. When the output's positive, it heads to ground, the middle of the batteries, and so we want the green to light up. The anode is the long lead of the LED, and it goes one space right to ground. The short lead goes to ground. Now the red LED will be the opposite. We'll have the short lead towards the output, and then the long lead towards ground. So long lead now is down at the bottom, and I'll make that connection there. And so that's just a extra little circuit, polarity indicator circuit, to uh, let us know uh, the direction of the current, and also by the brightness of the LEDs, we'll get a little bit of an idea of the amount of current. So now unfortunately, uh, you gotta put one battery into this breadboard before the other, and so, well, I have this battery here, the green LED is on, and uh, so one of the LEDs will come on depending on which battery you put in, probably, sometimes they don't, but uh, that's not hurting anything, so don't worry too much. So with uh, this battery, we have the negative to ground with the positive, the, the positive rail. So this other battery is going to be the opposite. We're going to have the positive to ground, and we're going to put the negative side of this battery into the negative rail. And now you can see the LED already switched. It switched to the red one. And uh, so it didn't hurt anything, but uh, even though the LED was on, the circuit wasn't complete until we changed the power. So now, right now, the red LED is on. That tells us that the signal is negative coming from the trim pot. And so I'm going to turn it more positive. And now you see after a little while, the green LED comes on. And uh, if I turn it more negative, now the red LED comes on. And we can adjust the brightness. Uh, but I'm just turning the trim pot a very little amount. And we're getting enough voltage to really light up the LED. So I'm going to get it to where it's kind of at the voltage to get it to start conducting. Remember LEDs take about 1.5 volts to conduct and now we'll take a multimeter reading. So now we'll get a quick uh, reading to just show that the uh, input voltage is smaller than the output voltage meaning the uh, whatever we input will be amplified and so here you see at the trim pot we have about 1.7 volts and now we'll go to the output and we can connect any uh, conductive area that's connected to the output. And uh, so I'm connecting to a resistor. And now you see it's about 5.6 volts. So I think we're getting closer to three times uh, the input voltage coming out of the, the op amp. And so now I'll turn it negative and I'm going to try to get it where the LED wouldn't conduct as far as the uh, input voltage is concerned 
And now you see we have a negative a little more than half a volt. So that's nowhere near enough to get the LED to conduct. But the LED is conducting. That's because at the output we're getting about the, the range where it's supposed to conduct. And that's one reason why it's kind of fluttering now. There we go. I have a better connection. Uh, you see it's just a little bit above the voltage to get the LED to conduct. Now it says negative because as far as the output's concerned uh, we have a negative voltage and so the red LED is set to conduct when the output is negative and the green LED is set to conduct when the output's positive. 